We are live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Freemason Podcast, where we have nothing to do with Freemasonry. Uh, this is Montreal Healthy Girl, aka Brittany Auerbach, super badass naturopath, and the naturopath is the least of the credentials. The life experience is the the, the biggest uh, credentials, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, Brittany, welcome to the show. We have a lot to talk about today. Thank you. Super happy to be, super happy to be here. Yeah, so why don't you introduce yourself to uh, to the audience, to anyone who hasn't seen your channel, what you do, what you're about, and I would love to get into like your life, your life journey that led you on this path. Sure. So I'm originally from Montreal, and um, I'm basically just a girl who grew up in the country, 45 minutes west of the city. And I got, I mean, most of my life I battled with health stuff, so I think that's what sort of brought me having an interest in vegan living, detox, health. Even before I got chronically sick in my 20s, I was into this. So basically, my I, I did my 16-year-old um, high school thesis paper on ADD and Ritalin. <laughs> so I was kind of always into this sort of thing. So that's kind of what led me here. But yeah, I definitely have a passion for health. And um, I think my own personal struggles are sort of what, what brought me to inquiring about alternatives on how to heal the body repair detox and and all that mm, what kind of personal struggles i well i mean i mentioned a little um yeah. on my channel about my history but i from really young i was always sick i was basically the person in my family who always had a health problem i had every infection you can imagine i was sort of a shy reclusive kid and um, i had chronic infections growing up took a lot of antibiotics. I moved out really young and sort of derailed a little bit into the drug party scene um, and taking a lot of antibiotics for infections and not really taking care of myself, eating poorly, having an eating disorder uh, and all that kind of fun stuff. And that sort of led me into my mid twenties, which is where I was diagnosed with uh, four chronic diseases in a three month period of time. And my whole life basically um, ended or the life that I knew. Mm -hmm. And so I was forced to stop all my fun, bad habits and, um, and start on a path to healing. So, so that's, you know, a little bit about, about that, but I don't know how, how much detail you actually want. But. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you want to go deeper, I would love to, you know, we would all love to hear it. I'm sure, you know, like, I mean, I guess I could ask you questions maybe to pry into it if you want, but <clears throat> um, did you, did you like, were you enjoying that party life when you got sick? Were you like grasping? Absolutely. Yeah, you were you like grasping <laughs> onto it? Like, like was your goal when it was your goal to heal and get back to that? Because that's what a lot of people are, right? They want to get back to that life. I yeah. was so upset. It was. I think there's something we don't realize when we're really toxic, and that's the fact that we think we love these bad habits, but when we have a lot of yeast and parasites and heavy metals and our cells aren't working properly and our adrenals aren't working properly, we have low energy, low vitality, we're seeking stimulation externally and we're seeking that neurotransmitter, like happy hormone rush outside of ourselves. And, and that's why we sort of pursue these behaviors. But I was, I mean, anybody who knows me now and knew me then can't believe the transformation. I was the most cigarette addicted, chain smoking, like booze hound, <laughs> alcoholic, shooter girl. I mean, I was started drinking at 9 a.m. every single day. I was spinning at martinis at eight sometimes even. Uh, and, and it was just, it was so hard for me when I got sick. I just, I was so toxic and honestly very depressed for close to a decade before that. So I just, getting sick and having to quit drinking was the hardest thing for me. Quitting smoking, I had done a couple of years prior to getting my chronic diseases, actually. I had such bad asthma, I had no choice, really. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was so hard. I just wanted to get back to eating pizza, partying with my friends, going out. I was like, I'm going to detox. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. I'm going to you know, cure this candida. I was convinced it was that, mm -hmm. like everybody is. Yeah. And, uh, and I was simple. like, and then I'm going to go back to my life. So. Wow. But, uh, but it turned out a bit differently, right? I mean, once you actually get to the point where you can drink beer and eat pizza all day, you don't really want to anymore. The cravings are gone. Yep. You're actually healthy and you don't need it. <laughs> whatever we put in, whatever goes in wants to survive, right? So when we have those yeasts or we eat a lot of sugar or we drink more alcohol, like everything wants to live, you know? So what, 
it wants to replicate inside, you know? So that's what, I feel like that's what attracts a lot of people to, to partying as well. And drinking is like, obviously masking the pain for sure, but also that whatever is in there wants to live and the alcohol helps it live. You know, it's like the, the almost the darkness or whatever you want to call it, just, just thriving. Um, yeah. it, I'm curious, you said anyone who knows you then and knows you now, I, I have this thing where, where it's, you know, not that I'm a prophet, but there's a saying called a prophet is without honor in his hometown. I go home and people have no idea what I do. They have no respect for it. It's like, oh, you do that like healthy, like eating thing. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is, this is life changing detoxification work. Like obviously people don't understand if they're not into it, but do you have that? Cause I know you, you still live in Montreal. Do you have that thing where like people who know you just have no respect for what you're doing or do they, do they respect it? <laughs> there's, okay, so there's yeah. half and half. What you're talking about, I had it for a while. So definitely my, my party friends, my high school friends, the people in all the different bars I used to work in, they definitely think I'm like a quacker job. Like they think I'm crazy, right? They're like, she's just, some people write me messages. They'll be like, oh, I saw your gross little green shot. Why don't you come have a shot of tequila like a real woman? Or like, you know, they'll be like, you know, that's not really what you want. Yeah. Um, so, so I definitely got that for a while. I think that probably when I was sick, going through the first year or two, or even three years of my healing journey, which brought me to about three years ago, uh, people were just not really taking it seriously. I was lucky in the sense that I had a few really close friends that I met when I was a party girl, but who themselves weren't really party girls. And they, they were really there for me when I was going through my sickness. And they were very, very supportive. And they were like the main support system that I had at that time because my family was living abroad, um, though they were doing the best they could. So so that really helped. But yeah, most of my, my friends from you know high school and other people that I hung out with over the years, they we've sort of separated. Like mm -hmm. we don't really talk or mm -hmm. keep in touch because we don't have much in common. But something really interesting is that after completely healing myself and then going on to help so many people and then having a channel that has grown so much and that so many people give positive feedback to, it's definitely really helped. Like I've had a lot of those same people who call me crazy, call me now that they have health problems five years down the road and ask me for help. Mm -hmm. So I've assisted and helped a lot of people with, you know, fertility issues, friends of mine that are having trouble with that, friends of mine who are trying to quit alcohol, who got diagnosed with, you know, said conditions. Uh, so I've had a chance to, very be surprised at how many people have actually reached out to me and been like, all right, we thought you were crazy, but seriously, we tried to go in the conventional system. We're not getting any answers. We're freaking out and you've been this path. So please help. And, and I don't know, that's kind of, it's sort of warmed my heart a little bit, right? Yeah. Like it's kind of nice to have that validation that everything you've done to this point that everyone's doubted you for is actually the right path. It was for you and it is for a lot of people. So it's, uh, it's nice. It's, it's rewarding. Yep. Totally. I had, I've had the same thing going on with me. It's like the problem or not a problem, but it's interesting to, to watch how when people see that external validation, like when people see that other people are following you and other people are listening to you, they're more inclined to listen to you as opposed to like tuning into the, to the truth that you're speaking, you know, like from the very beginning, you know, like tuning in to see if that's the truth from their own intuition versus Oh, other people following this Brittany Auerbach chick. She must be, she must know what she's talking about. I gotta like, let me hit her up. You know, it's interesting <laughs> how that works. Right. It's like, like with, with, you know, like there was, I used to do pickup, pickup artistry, you know, like talk, picking up women on the street and doing all that. Oh, that's funny. Did yeah. you do it on YouTube? Uh, no, no, did I do like just pickup? Okay. Yeah. Just on life. Yeah. Just in life. Like back, back before I got sick, I would talk to women on the street. I would talk to them in bars and I would use all kinds of techniques and strategies and, and like, there's something called social proof where you want to make sure you're like always around cool people and like other people are always validating you that you're, that you're good. And that's like a similar thing, you know, like you're on YouTube and you start blowing up and then all these people all of a sudden like now have respect for, you know, or like, Even well, though you're saying the same, thing you're, you're saying, saying the same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you haven't changed a, 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 not even an inch, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Wow. Very that's cool. funny. Actually talking about, pick up artistry i was uh -huh. recently watching some funny youtube videos of guys going around and picking up girls but with really ridiculous lines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and funny things so yeah yeah one, one of the guys is one of my friends andrew hales he's on like i don't know if you're watching his channel it's called lahwf loft and he does like might, yeah maybe picking up girls in the most ridiculous ways but but yeah that's a whole <laughs> i just made a video on that that's like a whole industry you know massive massive industry teaching guys basically how to get laid and it's like 
you know, they're, 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 I feel after doing this detox and health journey that it's totally inauthentic, you know, it's like using games and, and lines and like bullshit instead of just being vulnerable, have exposing your heart and being yourself, in which case you'll end up meeting someone who actually is there for you and not someone that you're trying to be, you know? So, exactly. which is, which is never sustainable, you know, and, and, and take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, it's not sustainable. Every relationship I've had from pickup has lasted two to six weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a great two yeah. weeks though. Yeah. You know what it is? Picking up random people, casual relationships is the same thing as drinking, getting wasted in a bar, smoking like crazy, doing drugs. It's a different escape mechanism mm -hmm. where you're not being true to who you are. And under the influences of all those things or when you're being something other than yourself in any way, whether it's to get people or get reactions or, you know, have the escape that you're looking for, it's actually a way of fulfilling an empty emotional need that we have. Mm -hmm. It's like what we want is connection. What we want is fulfillment. What we want is for people to understand who we are and care about who we are and to share our talent and our individual artistry with the world, whatever that may be. And so anytime we're being inauthentic or under some influence that isn't who we really are, we're going to end up unfulfilled. It, it is unsustainable. So it might be fun for a short while, could be a good distraction. It might be, you know, what people need momentarily when they're going through a rough time or their happy hormones are low, but, <laughs> but yep. yeah, long-term happiness doesn't find itself in those ways. So it's like eating McDonald's basically. It tastes good for five minutes <laughs> and then you're bloated and you're like, why? Yeah. Would it even what taste good? Would it even taste good at this point? Have you had anything like that? And in, 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 I haven't had anything like that in four years. I don't even no, know. No, I don't. You know what? I, I When I was a kid, my mother, we walked by McDonald's. I used to go for birthday parties and stuff. My mother would always say, never eat the meat. It's not real meat. It's super scary. You see those golden arches? Those golden arches are poison. So when I'd go in, she'd only let me eat the pizza, which I don't even didn't even know McDonald's had pizza. This is how long ago it was. I was like three years old. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, I've, I've never actually had a McDonald's burger. And I've eaten McDonald's twice in my entire life, other than as a very young infant for those pizza parties. And the last time I was 14, like anyone, even my friends during my party years, they would go to Tim Hortons at 4 a.m. drive through and I'd be like, oh, I can't. It's poison there. I'm going to go to Tim Hortons. It was not better, but in my mind, it was. Where, where was the Tim second? Hortons you said like Tim Hortons twice. What was the second place you meant? You said uh, they would, go, no, to so they would go to Tim Hortons. They would go to Tim Hortons, and then you would go to Tim Hortons. Oh, no. They would, sorry. They would go to McDonald's, <laughs> and I would go to Tim Hortons. Oh, okay. I, I messed that one up. Yeah. Oh, it's a donut place. Much better. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So much better in my mind, but, yeah. you know. Awesome. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't really eat the processed food. I, I'm definitely more lenient with my diet than I was when I was going through my rigorous detox. Like I allow, I was doing fully raw for a while and all that kind of stuff. Now I'm definitely back on the food here and there. Um, I try to eat as clean as possible, but I try to live also stress-free because as a person who, you know, had eating disorder younger and then went through like this crazy orthorexia while I was healing, I just want to find balance. What was the word you used? Orthorexia? Orthorexia is a term they use for people that are health obsessed. In okay. other words, they won't eat like cooked rice because it's cooked and it's bad for you and it's starch and it's so it's people that that are like seeking perfection in a dietary way. So okay. it's basically another form of disordered way of looking at health. I mean, I think it's blown up. I think the medical community blows it up because they don't want people like centrally focused on nutritional health. But um, but I, I definitely find that for me as a person, I'm just happier when I can be more flexible. Totally. So I'm still a vegan. I still eat 95% organic. I eat mostly fruits and vegetables. I juice a ton. I mean, I volunteer at a health retreat where I get raw food all the time. But, but I just kind of play it easy when I'm traveling and I try to, you know, be as lax as I, I can for my own emotional health and happiness. Totally. Stress is the enemy, not as much as the parasites and candida and all the toxins, you know? So if we're constantly stressed about being perfect, it's another form of poison, I believe, you know, perfectionism. Um, yeah. And, you know, especially, and I've seen it with a lot of my clients, like I have some brilliant, brilliant clients who just try and make everything structured from 9 a.m., like the second they wake up to the second they go to sleep, every, every supplement, every herb, every food, like ounces of meat. And I'm like, ounces of food, ounces of this. And I'm just like, dude, you have to take, like, you have to take a step back. You, you'll never heal like that. You're just fueling yeah. that obsession and like, you know, going into the control and management and, and 
the one thing that I'm realizing, like this is my, my what's coming up for me in my personal journey now is like, there are forces bigger than us, you know, that are, that are kind of, that are kind of running the show, you know, and if we try and manage them, we end up becoming small. You know, I feel like by be, in order to become really, really big in, on this planet, you actually have to surrender. You have to like allow these forces to, to do their job, you know, and just like obviously get you done work, you know, and, and eat clean. But, but also there's an element of surrender, which for me is, has been really, really powerful recently. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, there is. I, I definitely agree with that. I think we are energy and in order, I mean, the idea between eating clean isn't just, the chemistry process of eating good food so it can build good cells. There's also a component of when the body's clean and not given a bunch of sludge, it works better, it's cleaner, and you can actually funnel, release, and absorb energy more easily from your environment. When you eat a healthy diet that doesn't have processed foods that numb your emotions and numb your physical processes and make you feel bloated and lethargic, you, you can actually feel your emotions. And our emotions and how we feel them is actually what attracts either positive or negative things to us. I took this, this really cool, uh, like short term weekend class called heart math. And my, my father had like a, you know, cardiac incident years ago. And, um, and he actually, after that, I was just doing all this research about cardiac stuff. Cause, uh, that was like right when I was still sick and I didn't really know as much as I do now about it. And, uh, and I, I stumbled across this thing called heart math, which actually talked about the heart and energy and wasn't really about cardiac issues specifically, but I still ended up taking it. And what I learned most profoundly from that was that our body, like our heart actually sends more signals to our brain than vice versa. And our heart emits this energy and this radiation up to 60 feet in front of us, which means you can energetically clash with people. You can absorb their energy really easily. And you actually create an aura around yourself that is either going to repel or attract good things. Everything is energy. So yeah, so how we eat is basically how we fuel our body with energy, but it's also how effectively we allow our body energetically to interact with the world and our surroundings. Mm. And that's essentially what is going to make us big and what is going to make us, I mean, not big physically, but like yeah, energetically, big in a spiritual yeah. sense yeah. Um, and allow us to, to really find that connectivity that we want. And bring people and cultivate the kind of life that we're looking for with people that are valuable to us and that can actually help us in our, our in, internal growth journey so mm. yeah beautiful that reminds me i did a lot of that sort of same sort of research when i was uh, in the amazon drinking ayahuasca and i was constantly trying the shamans would always say like the journey is the, the most difficult journey in life is the two or the one foot however many inches like the 18 inches from your head to your heart you know um, and like moving your consciousness down to a different place that doesn't really have gymnastics, you know, it's just, it's just pure. It's just like, it just is, you know, and, and, and I really believe that going back to like the control versus surrender, I feel like the mind is like this little Casio watch that it's very limited in its capabilities. And then we have this massive heart and, and, and energy centers below that are like this, I don't know, supercomputer or, or maybe an iPad or something, you know, and like able to do so much more, but it's interesting to watch people be stuck and myself included be stuck in this little world, you know, and you said the heart goes out 60 feet, the mind, the, the aura of the mind is only about a foot, right? Maybe a little more. So it's 60 times greater. We're, we become 60 times larger if we're in our heart space, you know, if we're in our heart and our belly, just kind of being present, radiating, radiating, radiating out, you know, so really, really well, it's awesome. amazing. I mean, I felt it and I didn't know what I was feeling, but even from, from very young, I've always been a person, I think part of the reason why I went the route of drugs and, you know, all of the extensive party ways and toxic behaviors is I think I, I always was a person who was very emotional. In other words, I didn't really know how to cope with my emotions. Like I didn't know what I was feeling. And I've, I've always felt that I absorb energy from around me really easily. And then I have a hard time not holding on to it, especially if it's a negative energy. So I, I was trying to figure out my own self energetically and, and how I was reacting and interacting with the environment, especially being in, in some not so healthy relationships and, and environments, especially in my youth and, and growing up and all that stuff. So. Uh, so for me, that was a bit of a, of a process, but I don't know, like, I, I think that a lot of our, our health emotionally and our ability to be and achieve our best selves 
is actually how we interact with others and how we absorb emotions and how we build relationships to other people. So we don't want to numb and suppress the way that we feel. You know, we want to be open. And I think things like you mentioned ayahuasca, and I, I've actually never done it. For someone who's done so many experimental things, I've, I'm so scared to do it. And I don't know why I'm scared to do it. I'm terrified. I think I've done so many, I relate back a lot of the health problems I had to just overdoing it with drugs and drinking. And I'm like scared to let go that way, maybe. I'm like afraid of what's going to happen. I'm afraid I have some creepy demons lurking <laughs> that I'm not ready to deal with. I don't know. But um, it's been coming up. It's been coming out over and over for years. It's been five or six years where everywhere I go, everyone I talk to, it keeps coming up. And I, I've had so many opportunities to do it, and every time I haven't. So um, it's interesting. I'm like I'm, I'm impressed when people go ahead and they do it a bunch of times. Like I'm so scared to just go and actually do it. But. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of reason to be scared, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people say. It's not coming. Not yeah, helping. it's not like it's 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 very very serious work, especially for you. It's gonna be very it would be very serious because of how serious you are about health. You know, like other people, I've seen people go to the jungle and like, yo man, I'm going to trip on ayahuasca. You know, like and they <laughs> they have yeah, I saw the stars, I saw everything. I'm like, all right, dude, like that you have a whole different experience based on your intentions and the, the place that you come from, and also your level of intensity. See. You're super, super intense. So <laughs> all of that, all of that Is energy. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would get beat up. That's, that's just my, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, no, I think you're right. I think that's why I don't want to do it. I know it. I know yeah. it inside. I'm not ready. <laughs> The more intense, like the more intense somebody is, it's like, it's like, I feel like the spiritual journey and your, your journey is evidence of this. Mine too. Like I was a super intense athlete before this. I guess you put all your energy into being the best drinker in Montreal, but, no, but, but nonetheless, like all of that level of energy and intensity that goes into something when it cracks, it goes to the other, to the spiritual journey and it becomes that intense in the spiritual journey, you know, and, and health and 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 healing so anyway ayahuasca is like really really powerful stuff it's not the best i've found more um grounded and safe safer and more sustainable approaches here in in, in california that i work with um but i drank a lot of medicine and it's really really good for cracking open the psyche from allowing to see yourself from a different perspective um i have a lot of issues and like um criticisms about the, the ayahuasca world and how it's run and, and 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 how people the humans are using it you know a, a knife can be used to slice butter it can also be used to kill somebody and ayahuasca mm. is only a tool and people are using it like it's a god you know or, or people are people are abusing it you know so yeah well it's like anything too i feel that the whole ayahuasca train has become a bit trendy maybe that's what put me off of it also at first, I was like, that's interesting. And then over many years of meeting, like you said, a bunch of people that are like, yeah, yeah. I did ayahuasca in the woods. And other people are like, oh, my God, it was terror. I'm just yeah. like, ah, the combination of both things. I think that it's important that anything we do, it's like exercise. Okay, you could work out and be doing it because you love your body and you want to move and you feel good and you have energy. Or you could be doing it because you hate your body and you want it to be different and you're miserable and mm -hmm. you're tired and your adrenals are shot and you're mad at your boss. You know, you're doing the same thing, but you're getting completely different results and different benefits. So it's yeah. important that anything we choose, any healing modality, whether it's spiritual or physical like diet, um, it's important that any medicine, whether it's, you know, an actual medication or if it's a supplement or if it's a food or meditation or whatever you're using, that you're doing it with the intent of actually healing and addressing mm -hmm your body from a loving place. I think that's what's important. And, totally. and finding a place that you feel really safe to do these things in, I think that's sort of key, right? You're, you're only really gonna heal if you have confidence in what you're doing and the approach that you're taking, and if you feel really safe and open and receptive to it. That's that's sort of where you're gonna see the most benefit. 100%. And, and the jungle is a very interesting place when it comes to safety like it is safe but it feels unsafe because there's so many animals and so many insects and so much going on it's like you feel so tiny and so small and uh, yeah I've, I've done 30 ceremonies they were all every single ceremony was brutally terrifying 
So I'm, I'm happy to introduce you to anyone, uh, to the right people, if you want to go, go drink ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever I stop eating a chicken chicken, I will let you know. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not, I feel it's not needed in this, in this lifetime to, there's other ways, you know, there's really, there really is other ways of cracking open, you know, I, well, I, I find I moved, I went through a bit of a spiritual overhaul a few years ago, if you can call it that, or maybe an emotional breakdown, whichever way you want to talk mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I just, I left Montreal. I quit the business I was working at. I decided to go do a 35 day water fast. I had so much anger and frustration and resentment, both from being sick and also just a bunch of emotional stuff I'd accumulated over the years. And I, I mean, I found a lot of therapy in the jungle just by myself. Like mm -hmm. I remember staying at a, at a health retreat actually in Costa Rica and they were doing ayahuasca retreats and I was not ready for it. And I was like, I just, I have so much in me that I don't want to, I don't know how to release right now. And they were like, why don't you just go for a hike in the woods? Just go right now. Like, there's plenty of space. There's a lot of different, like, health people around here. You're not going to get killed or something. So, like, just go and just scream. Find a place you feel comfortable at. Just dance, yell, scream, kick. And I was like, that's so crazy. But I did it. I went hiking. I, I hiked for at least an hour and a half. I thought I was super far away. They heard me screaming. <laughs> they heard me at the retreat. They heard me howling in the woods like a crazy person. But I just remember, like, screaming at the top of my lungs. And I was... Anybody seeing me would have thought I was crazy. I was kicking the dirt and down on the floor, pounding the soil, and I was hugging this like massive tree. And there was these big butterflies flying everywhere. And I just remember like like screaming until I lost my voice and then like dry heaving. <laughs> They're not like actually heaving, but like dry crying. I was yeah. like, <laughs> anyway, and I just I didn't even know. I was just so mad and I just let it all out. And then afterwards, I was like completely spent. It was probably only 10 minutes, but it felt like five hours. And then I just sat down on this wood plank and this huge blue butterfly, like the size of my head, landed right on my boob, okay? Like right, right here on my chest mm -hmm. and just started flapping. And I was like, what? I looked down and it stayed there for like 30 seconds. And I remember just, and then I just felt better. Yeah. I was like, oh. and then it flew away. And it was just, and then I felt so calm and I went back to the retreat and had dinner with everybody else. And. I just slept better that night. And I think that whether it doesn't matter how you do it, it doesn't matter if you work out, it doesn't matter if you write letters to every single person who ever harmed you. It doesn't matter if you, you know, scream to a friend. It doesn't matter if you go off in the jungle by yourself and yell like a crazy person. We have to let our emotions out. And that doesn't mean attack people around you. It just means speak your truth, share what's bothering you and let it out. Don't hold on to it because toxic emotions are, what make us sick. There's a metaphysical emotional cause to every single disease. And I think that's probably the thing that took me the longest to discover of everything health. Mm -hmm. Like my whole channel is about physical health. I mean, in the last year or so, I've done a lot more emotional health videos. Um, but I mean, I talk a lot about eat this for this, take this essential oil for that. Like this is the perfect protocol for UTIs, the perfect protocol for this, for that. But the truth is that you have those things chronically and recurring, not just because of toxemia and nutritional deficiencies, but also because you have toxic emotions that you're bottling in. There's things you want to say to people around you. You're getting treated in a way that you don't feel as respectful and you're not standing up for yourself or, you know, you're not living in line with what you want. You're doing a job that just really doesn't nourish you or you're in a relationship that's not helping you to grow or making you feel like you're choking, whatever it is. Right. So, there's, you know, spirituality, there's so many different layers of it. And it's so interwoven with our physical health and with our emotional health, most of all. But I mean, I think that we should focus less on what we're eating and more on just being happy. Because mm -hmm. when you're happy, it's so much easier to choose a salad, you know, rather than like numb yourself with pizza. So it just everything else sort of falls into place. And yeah, so I think the spiritual part of it is, is really important and the emotional part of it is so huge. And I definitely want to focus a little bit more on that approach going forward because that's not addressing that is what makes it so that some people can't heal. Like some people are not healing no matter how clean they eat. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, I'm like, who are you angry at? Yeah. You know, go yell in the woods. You'll feel so much better. <laughs> that That is the truth. That is the truth. I, I talk about boundaries in my parasite videos, you know, like I, I post a lot of parasite videos on like how to kill parasites naturally. And I, I don't talk about one supplement. I talk about boundaries, you know, like, how, can, are you living a life for you? Or are you living a life for, for other people? Are you in a relationship where people just get to your core? You know, like our parents or family members or people who we have grown up with are capable of like really getting in there, you know? And it's like, how do you, 
you know, and, and that feeling that we get when someone is, is, is in our core or like fucking with us, that feeling we get of like, you. or like either, either we hate them or we like feel like a scared little kid, you know, and we go like, like, like helpless, you know, like a helpless kid, that feeling perpetuates parasites, you know, that, that feeling is like what allows them to live or allows like, like darkness or whatever, whatever tox toxicity we're talking about, just unhealth, n not health, <laughs> whatever the word is, um, to live yeah. is just like that feeling, you know? So, so I, I always tell people like, you, you have to start living a life for you and doing things for you and like telling some people to, 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 that they're not allowed in, you know, or just not letting them in, you know? So a hundred percent. Well, I, I'm, fascinated by parasites i love it honestly i i'm obsessed with bacteria parasites healing the bacteria of the body the microbiome that's really my i am so obsessed with it i would spend my whole life researching it like mm. that's what i love to do and i've done a lot of videos about parasites too and like you if i talk about different you know ways of getting rid of parasites but it's like what you were saying like what's eating you what is why do you have a low vibration in your body that houses parasites in the first place a parasite is not what's making you sick mm -hmm. a parasite living in your body is trying to eat up some kind of crap that you are not filtering out on a regular basis and parasites they only live in low vibration environments and you need to be feeling certain emotions that are low vitality in order for them to actually thrive mm -hmm. and those emotions are things like shame guilt fear anger you know, not feeling good about yourself, low self-esteem. Those are all things that are going to propagate the growth of unwanted organisms in the body and sort of make it hard for oxygen to flow, for everything and energy to flow in your body. So the highest, you know, it's important to, to try to surround yourself by people that are positive, but also just self-love. Like you're, the thing is, it's easy to say surround yourself with positive people. But the truth is like, this is a world full of toxic, heavy metal ridden, poisonous, like nutritionally deficient people whose neurotransmitters are off. And even if they're doing the best they can, like most people today are emotionally unhappy and they take it out on everyone around them. And this world is super toxic and low vitality. We're killing all the trees. The oceans are polluted. We're chemtrailing the world crazy. At the end of the day, it's like there's not enough energy going on in the world compared to how it used to be and we're overpopulated and all that. So it's easy to say just like find those wonderful, miraculous human mm -hmm. beings. But the truth is you can hold on to your energy and protect yourself energetically and, and be happy if you love you. Like love and acceptance and happiness and joyousness and gratitude, those are all super high vitality emotions. Worms don't live in that environment. Mm -hmm. Parasites don't live in that environment. Bad bacteria are not interested. They want to be in a murky pond, not in a happy, vibrant human. Mm -hmm. So if you we keep trying to, to change our external circumstance. You know, yes, you should leave that toxic relationship. And yes, you shouldn't put up with, you know, mean parents and you should quit a job that doesn't fulfill you. But if you love yourself, you won't choose those things. You won't find yourself in those circumstances. Mm. And even when someone's being mean to you, it only hurts if you believe it's true. Like if, if I know I'm awesome and someone's like, you're a mean, hateful liar. And I know I never lie and I'm not mean or hateful. I'm just like, no. <laughs> You're projecting, yep, you know, yep. but if you believe those things about yourself or you're not sure about who you are or I mean, who is sure about who they are, but or you just don't love yourself, you don't feel good about who you are in this moment, it becomes a lot easier for people to crack you down, create little holes in who you are and then suck your energy that way. Mm -hmm. So it's all about preserving your own energy. And the best way to do that is just be the best person you can be and accept yourself where you are, whether that's 100 pounds overweight, sick with four chronic diseases like me when I was sick, like with acne all over my body and face, whatever it is that's making it hard for you to love you in this moment, just try because mm -hmm. no one is going to love you or can love you guaranteed a hundred percent loyally, you know, that you can for sure count on from now until the very day you die, but you mm -hmm. lovers are fleeting family is going to pass away. And most families are not loving you unconditionally. Anyways, friends come and go, you know, jobs change, circumstances change. But you know you, and you can accept you and care for you every single day from now until your last one. And that's a really comforting thought, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody else is just a bonus. Oh, man. <laughs> Woo! That was fuego right that was there. so intense. You, that... you were right. You planted the seed, and my <laughs> intensity came out. <laughs> I'm going to be posting that clip, just that five-minute clip on YouTube as a second video. <laughs> That needs to go. I'm oh not God, joking. It was five minutes straight. I'm so. No, 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 no. It was a few minutes. It was, <laughs> it was amazing, though. Seriously, it made me think about a lot of different things. Um, 
I want to recommend a book called Love Yourself Like Like Your Life Depends On It. Not necessarily. I know it. I have yes. it. I love it. Yes. I have the audio book. It's yes. a picture with a guy who's holding yeah, a gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Camille something? Yeah, Camille Ravi Khan. Or, yeah. Yeah. yeah amazing. Oh my God, Kamal I love Ravikant. that book. It's so good. It's so true. The, the self-love. And and another thing that the, the rebuttal I get when I talk about self-love is that people think that that they won't change if they love themselves. And it's like change is a natural byproduct when you accept where you are. Just like you said, if you're 100 pounds overweight and you accept it, it's easier to lose weight than it is to grind on yourself and say, you fucking idiot, why are you overweight? What you? It's, it literally becomes a seamless, natural progression once you accept where it is that you are for improvement, contrary to what exactly. the mind would think. The more negative thoughts you have, the more your body needs to store it, either in the form of disease, in the form of fatty liver, or in the form of actual body fat, whatever it is, right? If you're thinking bad thoughts all the time, your body sees it as a threat or toxin. But you're right about that. That's a rebuttal I get from so many people too, which is if I don't, if I'm not hard on myself, then I'm not motivated mm -hmm. to make changes. I'm not motivated to be my best self. I'm not going to figure out tomorrow's solution. And it's people say that all the time. But the truth is when you love yourself, you're open and receptive to better opportunities. Things present themselves to you and you actually pursue the things that are healthy for you rather than trying so hard to make something that doesn't fit work. Because that's what people do. They're like, oh, I grind on myself and then I just, I, you know, I kill myself and I make myself do these things and then in the end I get what I want. But those people are rarely happy mm -hmm. or they're sick and they're staying sick and they've been doing that same habit for so long, but that it isn't serving them. You know, it's like the person who eats a low carb diet for five years and is still overweight. And they're like, but I but carbs are bad for you. And it's like, but you've tried the other thing for five years. You haven't gotten the results you've wanted. So why do the same thing that isn't serving you? You know, it's time to, to shift the paradigm and, and try something new. And I love that book from him. I find it, I find it so nice. Totally. Totally. Something, I think your hair is going, is going on the microphone. There's like a, oh. yeah. Is it better? Maybe it was, Something's hitting, whatever. Sorry, audience. Okay, I'll move it. I don't mind it, but I know the audience will. Some okay, people. Okay, po the podcast was <laughs> great, but can you just fix her microphone? You know, <laughs> I get those those kind <laughs> of cuts. Seems to be better, yeah. Okay. Well, we could also cut that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was fine. It, it's just it's happened. I think it's happening like every few minutes, just like a like a whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Is that is that better? It might be. It might be the the plug. Is it fully plugged in? Let me see. Hold on. me has that made a difference uh seems to be better right now yeah yeah okay cool but now you're all you're now you're in this this lower corner you're just in the corner okay. <laughs> is that better yeah get yourself out of the corner boundaries <laughs> I punched myself. oh it could also be okay yeah hold on so it's better now yeah yeah maybe was it your phone or something potentially i don't know okay I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry for the intrusion. No, no, My hair right. blowing in the wind. If if they can't get past the s s microphone issue for this amazing content, then they have serious issues and that they need to heal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They um, need to love themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like they they have serious you. problems. You're like, oh, just love yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So cool. Wow. All right. Yeah, go ahead. You. Well, I was going to say, so, and what about you? You've been doing a lot of retreats and things. So what do yeah. you do with your retreats? Yeah, the retreats are like, they've really evolved. I've had two so far. Okay. And the first one, I was just like, okay, it's going to be a get together and, um, you know, we'll just see what happens. Like I didn't have many plans and it was beautiful because people who all thought in a similar way, obviously there's a little bit of variance. People have different, different opinions on diet. And like, for instance, like an example here is you're vegan and I'm not, but we get along super well because everything else is like, yeah, we see the world in this particular lens, you know? And, and you know, all these people, not everyone was a vegan, not everyone was this certain way, but we all got, we all had this particular lens of life and how health works, you know? So, um, so we just, it just, there was this amazing synergy and it felt good to have a real community around the, the subject. And then the second retreat, I started making drastic spiritual 
spiritual growth in my life uh, in between the first and the second retreat. And I just, the second retreat was like, was like life changing, like for, for me and for all, for all parties involved. Like I just, I just held this space. I just held this certain space of like safety and com and like, like transformation at the same time, safety, transformation, uh, compassion, and like everyone in the group like broke down. Like we just like all were just like cracking and cracking. We did we did a Native American sweat lodge. We did um, tons of different exercises like a trust fall and um, what else? We went to hot springs and we did a lot of hiking and a lot of sharing. You know, those sharing circles, when you can be in a circle of people who truly are expressing their truth and their 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 emotions and, and, and their life struggles and you're in that sharing circle, Anytime someone speaks, it's like the whole, everyone else in the circle feels something and it creates this like, like a, like a rocket ship lifting off, you know? And by like the 10th person sharing, everyone's just like, ah, you know, just like, it's true. yeah, yeah. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. It is. You know what it is? It's something about exposing yourself to in front of other people. Honestly, it's something I'm not great at. Like I'm good at one-on-one -on -one. like this. I, mm -hmm. you know, people think that I'm a very public person because I have a YouTube channel, but I'm actually a very private person and I'm really shy and it's hard for me to talk about my personal emotions. I can talk about other people and how they need to love themselves and you know <laughs> how we should be more spiritual. But if it, I actually have to talk about me in this moment, how I feel, it's a lot harder. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. like that. We have our battle. But when you do it in front of other people, when you actually let go and you bear all and you just say what it is that you have to say, it's so liberating and it's so freeing. And you feel in that environment too, it's very supportive and everyone's really listening. And I think it's so important for people to feel heard. I think one of the biggest struggles we have in life is we don't need people to fully agree with us. Like everyone thinks that when we express our opinions, we need them to agree with us. But the truth is what we really just want is for them to listen, to care enough to actually hear us and to, to let us express ourselves and for that to be okay. That's really what most people just want. So, so, so that's true. a really nice nourishing thing for people. So true. That's, that's like one of the core ways of healing. I feel is if people could feel safe being themselves and then they don't have to worry about what the other person is going to put on them when they express that. It's like, we're all an animal, right? We're all this unique animal. Some people are octopuses. Some people are zebras, some people, whatever, whatever the, the just we're different flavor. I'm of a an, lion. Yeah, 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 you are. <laughs> You're a fucking lion and a bear mixed together. <laughs> me, I think me too, actually. I've actually done like spiritual work and I feel most resonating with a lion and a bear. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, I, was like, I don't want to be the octopus. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if I had to choose, please just don't yeah. tell me I'm like, I don't know, I'm you know or something. I'll yeah. be upset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not the, the, the animal's not about it's about like the intensity inside the belly, you know, it's not necessarily like a representation of the actual animal or like the way the animal would move, you know, it's like it's like a level of like intensity, you know, but, but anyway, like, all these people have different flavors and different things. And, and every animal just wants to be like, hey, this is me, I'm this animal. And we it, and then we live in a culture where it's not safe. There's no space for that, you know, to be like, hey, I'm, I'm this. It's okay if you don't like this, but I'm this, you know, and and then I feel like the other person could be like, oh yeah, it's okay that he's not me, but I'm this, you know, and then every, it just creates this yeah. this this feedback system, you know. Does that make sense, or is that a little loony? It does. It totally <laughs> makes sense, yeah. and I think it's, you know, what it is too. I think we're we're living in a fear-based society, and it's not just fear, like we're scared to go after what we want, or we're scared to assert it ourselves, but. We're scared to not fit in the mold that society or our parents or whoever else put for us. In other words, if you're doing something that's unconventional, you're doing something that's different, or you're saying something that people don't want to hear, people are afraid to express themselves. And I think it's because, I mean, as a person in the health space, I can tell you honestly that it's not always well received, <laughs> even if it's well intended. And I think what we need to realize, what's actually going to be the evolution of humans emotionally, is going to be to realize that there is enough room on this planet for a billion different opinions. Mm -hmm. We don't need to agree. Just because you are not a vegan and I am, doesn't mean that one is right or one is wrong or one is healthier or one is anything like that. And I think that we need to stop thinking that in order to connect with people or in, in, order, in order to have a tribe, in order to, to feel that we belong to something, that we have to be the same as that other thing. There just needs to be a, enough safe space for everybody to 
express themselves and for it to be well received. And I think that, that that's sort of the shift that's happening globally now. There's definitely a big health movement. I think that's amazing. But there's also more of an open, integrative approach to everything, not just health. People are a lot more open about taboo subjects than they ever were before. And I think it's there's just so much debate amongst humans about what's the right way, you know, pro-life or whether it's that or it's you know, pro-veganism or pro-conventional or pro-naturopathic or, I mean, there, there isn't one way to do anything. And there's just a different manifestations of what people choose to do in their lives. So I think the key here and the biggest takeaway is that like there's a million different animals and they all serve a different purpose and they all eat a different thing and they all have different daily lives like they all go about their days differently but is one really more valuable than the other when you actually look at the chain of events everything's essential even a mosquito mm. as much as i hate to admit it yeah. uh, but it's so i don't know i think we need to get to a point where like i'm excited for and it's already starting but for us to get to a point where we can actually freely express ourselves and for other people to realize that we don't have to all agree. We don't. The beautiful, but if we all thought the same, if your favorite color was yellow and my favorite color was yellow and our both favorite place in the world was Hawaii, like we'd be boring. Like the whole fun of it is discovering other people and how they view the world and the way that they go about things and, and their passions and their drives and their ambitions and even their like heartbreaks and their histories. And it's nice that we're all so different. And at the same time, we all want the same things. We all want to be accepted. We all want to be healthy. We all want to achieve our highest self. We all want to be free and we all want to be like attractive and, and, you know, vibrant and like, we're not so different for all of our different belief systems. Mm -hmm. So it's raising the vibration of humans. And I think that with all this movement of like, you know, cleaning out the oceans and stopping the pollution and people trying to go back to more natural foods with less chemicals and, you know, the elimination of, of toxic healing modalities for, for more natural ways. I think all of it is going to help to shift a higher vibration situation on planet Earth and in us. And I think that that's like when all humans and animals are going to thrive together. Absolutely. Woo! And that deserves an emoji. Let me let me get an emoji. I, <laughs> I wish I wish they had a fire emoji. You should. I like, you know, my favorite. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> my favorite emoji is that little. You know the little like finger one? It's like Yeah, yeah, they don't have there's only five <laughs> here on one. Skype. It's like good job. There's only five <laughs> here on Skype. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. You know, when you were when you're talking, you reminded me of um I did something called the Landmark Forum. I did the beginner and the advanced course. Anyone watching, go do the landmark forum one hundred percent. It's it's honestly incredible. But when you're talking about all these different opinions and how everybody has all these different opinions. If we, if we don't have space from the fact that it's an opinion of ours and we think that it's the truth, like the ultimate truth, you know, like every word that we say and when we say it, we total convinced that it's like the ultimate truth. You know, sometimes there are deep truths, you know, of course, but like making a, 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 a statement on something, it's literally just what we're saying from our particular lens, you know, if we don't have space from that, the fact that it's our opinion and it's someone else's opinion. If there's no space from that, it's like a storm. It's a nightmare, you know, but the landmark form teaches you that we all just have these opinions and they're just opinions, you know, like we can't, if they're not, they're not gospel. They're just, uh, they're, they're just opinions. And the landmark form teaches you to like, if we're like looking at life through this particular telescope, the landmark form teaches you to like, look at the telescope and say, oh, oh, I'm looking at life in this way. I'll put it back on, but at least consciously put it back on as opposed to just having it on all the time. Does, does that make sense? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that I've heard of the landmark before, oh. actually. I haven't done it myself. Uh -huh. I've heard of it. It's come up a few times. You're not scared I'm to do that, too, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not scared of that. It's more just telling that one. I would, take so, back, yeah. I would take back the lion diagnosis if you were scared of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of the three-day seminar I have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, no, it's definitely something I have on my to-do list. Mm -hmm. But I think that, yeah, I think as people, we need to realize that it's not it's not about finding who's right. It's not about finding who's right. Like we, people spend so much time. This is something actually a good friend of mine recently pointed out to me that most people, you know, and I have the tendency to do this when I'm angry. Like if I'm upset, 
someone will be talking to me. I'm not listening to them. I'm already thinking of how I'm going to like slam them down as soon as I get the chance, you know? Um, and, and I, and it was brought to my attention that I do this. So I was like, <laughs> God, don't you hate being called out on stuff? And then you can't do it anymore. <laughs> but, um, but, and it's so true. This is what we do. We're not, we already know what we're going to say. Like the truth is I know how I think. I know what I feel. I know what I could say next. But if I'm not actually listening to the other person talking, I'm not learning anything. So instead of trying so hard after two words to like fight why your perspective is the right one, instead listen to that person. There might be something you didn't know. There might be something that opens your eyes. It might be something that resonates with you. It's really important for people to actually learn how to listen. There's a difference between hearing and listening. And I think that's something that as humans, we don't really do. We spend a lot of time worrying about what we're going to say, how we're going to be perceived, you know, how, how we can come back on the other side of the conversation or what it is, the point we're trying to get across. You know, we know when we go into a business meeting, what our end goal is, we know what we want to achieve, but instead of writing out the conversation and writing out what happens, we're, we're, we're going in with this preconceived notion of how we want to control it. And that's where a lot of frustration in life comes. It's the resisting of what's happening, resisting what someone's saying, resisting how someone else feels, resisting that their views are different than yours. Resistance is painful. We know, think about going to the gym, like it hurts when you're lifting a heavy weight, right? Resistance hurts. It's, it's important, acceptance doesn't. Even if something really crappy is happening, if you're like, okay, this really sucks that this is happening, but it's okay because I can rebound from this. I can figure it out. Like if I can survive this, then it's all good. You know, rather than being like, this is horrible. Why is this happening? I can't believe this is happening. So it's just, we have to stop resisting. And I think that's what people do as humans. We have to realize that there's enough room for all of us. There's enough room for all of our opinions. There's enough room for all of our different ideas. And no single person was ever able to change the world. Like not one person invented every single modern technology. It needs so many different brains you know, for, for the world to go on. All these amazing things that have happened have happened because of the contributions from like millions of different people mm -hmm. from around the globe. And they don't all think the same. In fact, probably not a single two thought exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. So how cool is that? Like there's so much we can learn from each other mm -hmm. and there's so many people that, I mean, I find it kind of upsetting that even if I traveled every minute from now until I die, I would still not see every part of the world. Mm -hmm. Even if I talked like nonstop every hour on the hour to a different person, I would still never meet everybody and learn everything that they've learned that I might not know yet. The coolest part about life is what we don't know yet. It's not what we already know and what we're going to share with the world. It's, mm -hmm. it's like what we don't know yet. It's what we're going to learn tomorrow and, and next week. And what we don't know that we don't know, right? Because there's like, there's, this is part of the landmark form. There's a pie and there's like these two, two little things. One of them is, you know that you know. There's another little thing that's, you know that you don't know. Like, I don't know rocket science. You, you probably don't know rocket, maybe you do, shit. Oh, come <laughs> yeah. on, of course I know rocket science. <laughs> and then the rest of the pie is, you don't know that you don't know, you know? Yeah. So that's like, a, that's, that's infinite. It's literally infinite. That's what they say is a real sign of intelligence. It's not the people that know everything or think they know everything. It's the people that are well aware of how much they don't actually know. They know that they don't know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you look globally at what there is, like there are so many things that none of us could possibly know. I mean, think about it. Even if you're working, let's say me, I'm working in a health space. There are so many things about like maybe corporate living that I don't know. There are so many things about I don't know, being a stripper that I don't know, like things that I've never done. Before. Are, you, are you sure? Are you sure you did a lot of drinking? Yeah. <laughs> I had wild days, but that was unfortunately not one of the things okay. I was thinking. Yet. Yet. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, you know, there's just there's a lot of different life skills that we haven't acquired yet. There's so much information that we have yet to learn. And that's what's exciting about life. So if we spend less time attacking everybody else for their different views and actually accepting that maybe there's something to learn from them, we'd actually be all more qualified people, I think, you know? Totally. Totally. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you have anything you want to, uh, you want to add? I know we're coming close to an hour and I don't want to go, uh, I mean, I would love to have you on again, actually. So maybe we can do another one at some point, but do you have anything that you want to ask me or you want to talk about? We'll definitely do some plugs at the end. Sure. I mean, I guess I, I just, I would definitely love to be back on the show. It was super yeah. fun chatting with you. It's, it's always nice to 
uh, meet like-minded people. And I mean, we've been meaning to chat for a while. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's been like a hectic few months between yeah. yours and my schedule. It's yeah, it's hard to get two awesome people together at the same <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah. But um, I mean, I guess if I was just gonna do like a random statement, I because I work with people that are sick, and I know how discouraging it is to be in a place where you don't want to be. Like a lot of people watching this might not be in their ideal places. They might look at you and me and say, well, yeah, well, you know, she's already healed her health stuff and you are already, you know, successful and have your own business and you're fit and blah, blah, blah. You know, it might look to other people like it's easy to be cheerful and happy when you're already there, but there's always a backstory that people don't know. And the, the funnest part about going on a health journey or on an emotional journey or spiritual journey is not the end result. We think it is. We think when we're sitting there like overweight or sick or, or unhappy or with a horrible job or in a toxic relationship that we'll just be happy once we get there. But I think the thing I realized through my journey was that I wasn't able to get there until I was okay where I was. And, and you, every minute you have is your life. It doesn't matter if you're not where you want to be. You can't start living you know, when you're healthy, you can't start living when you have your dream body. Like if you're breathing and you're able to watch this podcast right now or watch YouTube or sit on your couch and be, you're also able to open the window and take some sun. You're also able to go outside and say nice things to yourself. You're able to call a friend. You're able to go for a walk with a friend. You know, you're able to start doing things, look up new jobs, you know, look up things you want to do, plan your future workouts or a healthier meal plan. There's so many things you can do. And next year at this time, you're going to wish you started today. You know, everybody says that like, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, it, life will start when I'm there. But the point is like the action is what gets you there. So start those actions now and it may feel like you're never going to get there. I know for me when I was sick, like it seriously felt like I was never going to get there. Like I didn't know I was going to get there. I wasn't sure of what I was doing. Nobody really knows what they're doing in life. You don't know when you're 10 years in the same field and people consider you an expert. You don't know when you're starting out something. People are confused. We're learning all the time. We all have self-doubt. And it's really just about surviving today and taking it one step at a time. No matter where you are, where you're going to stand one year from today could be worlds apart. You could be exactly where you want to be, like shockingly different, even three months from now. People have no idea how much change can really happen in a short period of time. Look at people that do like juice cleanses and three months later, they're a different person. Or like that potato guy, you know, the guy that ate only potatoes, who knew that was a thing? He lost like a hundred pounds in three weeks and like got some awesome career by eating only potatoes. I mean, I don't know, right? Like just people have no idea how many different ways there are to get where you want to be. So you deserve to be happy right now. You know, you too, John, you like <laughs> yeah. the people. And, uh, and so that's it. Just enjoy each moment. Like try to serve. All you need to do is survive today. Go to bed early, eat as good as you can. And just, that's it. Coast, you know, you'll get there. So. Woo. Can you do a mic drop after that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'll re-scrunch my hair in the microphone. Just buzz. <laughs> we heard it. I heard it a little bit, but I'm still, I'm posting. We got two five minute clips that I'm posting separately. Woo. <laughs> fuego, fuego. Unbelievable. <laughs> wow you need to do some public speaking you do public speaking right you know actually funny enough for someone who has a youtube channel and this is a bit like personal i said it i've said it i think in one video but i have a massive fear of public speaking every time i go see an energy person they tell me that i have a blocked throat chakra uh -huh. i'm okay one-on-one -on -one. i'm okay talking to like three people at a table as soon as i have to stand up in front of even my family all of a sudden i start sweating I get really weird. I put this funny stance on. I'm, I'm, I'm so scared of public speaking. I'm doing everything I can to try to get over it. Uh -huh. And I do have to force myself sometimes, but it's so hard for me. I don't know why. Wow. Public singing, same thing. Anything that requires like vocal action is, is tough. But I, I definitely want to learn that skill set because there's so much that I want to share oh my that God. I feel held back yeah. from. You, you totally. You need to be like a, like a Tony Robbins type, like female version <laughs> of Tony Robbins, whatever. Just like. Wow. Yeah, you rock it. You rock it. <clears throat> Amazing. Wow, that's, that's a very nice compliment. Thank you. Yeah, it's very sincere. The, the, those two four-minute uh, clips were are like our gold. You know. Um, okay, so Montreal Healthy Girl on YouTube. Uh, where can I? What's your website? MontrealHealthyGirl.com. 
Exactly. So it's MontrealHealthyGirl.com. Uh -huh. I have a contact form on there. It's basically my email, so they can send me. Anybody can contact me that way. Ask me any questions that they have. Um, I also have like it's basically a blog it's a website slash blog, and I have my YouTube channel as well that has my contact information on it. I also have an Instagram account, though I'm not the best. I do all my own social media, and I'm not very good at social media. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, um, so writing me on Instagram is probably going to take the longest response. But yeah, I'm also on Facebook. My personal name is Brittany Auerbach, so people can contact me that way. I also have Montreal Healthy Girl Facebook page as well. So those are Amazing. the best ways to get a hold of me. Yeah, she's got 140,000 subscribers on YouTube, right? 130? I think it's 100, I think it's 100, I don't even know now, 125. 125. I remember when it was 100,000, I was so excited. I took yeah. a picture, I was doing this like cute dance in my room, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, so I, I started watching it like, I think I started watching it like 18,000 subscribers and I literally watched it go from 18 to 100 in like, in, in like a couple months, you know, it was nuts. It was nuts. Maybe a little more in a couple months, but it was, it was pretty intense. Um, so, wow. Um, yeah, I'll post all yeah, the links. I'm excited. I, I mean, when I first started my channel, my sister actually forced me to start it. I was, I cried my first three videos. I actually was going to do maybe like a bloopers video of my very first videos because I was so scared of doing a video. I was like, I can't do this. It was so scripted and really inauthentic. I was very shy. I was yeah. like, hi guys, it's Britt from Montreal Hockey Girl. Today I'm going to talk. I forgot the line. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. So I, I just, I felt like I needed to help people. And my sister was like, videos are the way, you know, your blog posts are great. No one's going to actually know what you're trying to say. And you, you're healing yourself. Like you're, you're in so much less pain than when I knew you a year ago. You have to tell people this. So you know, I credit my sister for really inspiring me that way to start my channel. And I don't know. It's like I never thought that I'd have 120,000 subscribers or even millions of views from people and I'd get such positive feedback and just so many, like I'm so grateful for that forum because it's a way for me to express myself, all the knowledge that I've learned over the years that I think will really help people, um, that certainly have really helped me and a lot of people that I've worked with. So it's it's been such a nice community too um, of support. People, every time I've done detoxes and cleanses, it's kept me accountable. It's not always easy to go do like a 35 day water fast or you know all these crazy things, but when you know people are watching, yeah. your ego steps in, and I'm like, I can't eat that sandwich right now. I can't. Yeah. I'm counting on me. So it's definitely been really helpful. And you know, when things have gone wrong in my life, or when people were discrediting what I was doing, or questioning what I was doing, and I was still sick, and I had no idea I was ever going to get better, I would just look up, and people would say, Oh, I tried your tip. It really helped me. Oh my God, thank you so much for sharing. And it was like I used to like cry and read those messages and. When I felt bad about myself, my mom would say, go read those, read what people write under your videos. Oh my God, Brittany, you're helping so many people. Like you can't stop what you're doing. And it's just really helped keep me strong. And so, yeah, I love it. It's so exciting. I'm like, I, I still can't believe that it's grown as much as it has, but, but that I'm is super grateful for it. So, so true. I want to say one thing <clears throat> about that. Um, I, when I used to see YouTube channels and I would see the comments, I was like, this place is like, is like shark infested waters. You know, people are brutal here. When I started truly being authentic and just saying, you know what, I'm going to put my fucking heart out there on my channel and I'm just going to speak my truth. The feedback that I was getting towards my authenticity was amazing. Like if I would try and be cool or try and be someone, I'd get ripped apart. And as soon as I was, Honestly, I never really got that many terrible comments and, and not that I even care that that's like my judgment system. But but just the point is like when I was authentic, people would re receive it and they would give me love. And then I was like, wow, I want to keep doing this. And it becomes this cycle. And then every time something comes my way and I'm like, you know what? I can't share this on my channel. Like it, this is too, this is my, this is just too, uh, too deep or too, um, I'll be too emotional or too controversial or I just don't feel comfortable. I would, I bring, like I start starting to bring it forward now, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, I'm bringing it forward, bring it forward. And people are responding with like more love and more appreciation and I'm helping more people. And it's, it's a beautiful feedback system. Just like you said, like it's, it's, it's really, really amazing platform to run a business and, and to, to make a living doing what you love. It's like, it's, it's, it's a, it's an unbelievable blessing, you know, to do that. And anyone can do that. Any one of people watching, even if it's something simple, doesn't matter what field it is, it doesn't have to be health, you know, you can be making the best chairs and have a YouTube channel, you could be making the best posters, making 
painting homes. It doesn't matter what it is. Like I've seen people being successful on YouTube for anything, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. It's just about sharing your truth. I think people sense authenticity. Everyone, we have this mistaken idea that we need to be the way society wants us to be, or we need to be the way that you think people want you to be, or, or the way that you, you know, think you'll be liked for. But at the end of the day, what people actually like and what makes them want to come back for more is just when you're who you are. And that's the most validating thing. I mean, we've all tried to be someone else, whether it's for a job or for a person. And we never got the satisfaction we wanted. Either that person, I mean, I think the, the, there's only one time in my life that I remember tr truly not being myself. I was a teenager and I was trying so hard to impress some like guy in high school. And I was just so not myself, like in a really embarrassing way when I think about it now, but I was trying to be like everything I thought that he would want me to be. And he never liked me at all. Like uh -huh. he just didn't. I was uh -huh. like, why doesn't he like me? It's so hurtful. Because who would have liked me? I was so weird and creepy and can just you, not you, myself Can you share what, you, what did you do? <laughs> oh my do? god, I don't even know. I was very young. I was trying to be like super sexy and really Diva. sexual and yeah. just really experienced. And I was like this 14 year old gorky virgin kid who just didn't know anything about anything. And mm. I was just, I didn't, I kept saying things like I did all these cool things. Like, oh, I drink on the weekends, even though I had like almost never drank at that, yeah. that time. And I was just a total phony, yeah. you know, in every way. And he ended up not really liking me. And I was like upset for, I don't know, one month because it's yeah. high school and you get over it pretty fast. But, and then I remember thinking like that was the one time in my life where somebody very overtly like, disliked me strongly no. <laughs> and it's because I wasn't myself like I mean obviously people have disliked me over the years but it's just when you're yourself you you allow yourself to actually get positive feedback for who you are not everyone's gonna like you not everyone's gonna like me and that's okay well, there's plenty of room for you know them to like whoever they want but mm -hmm. when you're yourself you attract a lot of positive feedback and it's reinforcement for who you are and you're able to share your truth and your passion when you're trying to be anything other than yourself you're blocked off you're not actually able to share what really matters to you. And that's what touches people. That's what changes the world. That's what impacts people. That's what inspires people to want to be their best selves and to change their lives. It's you being raw and you being truthful about you, even if it's t totally crazy, even if it's something that's taboo, even if it's something that honestly just makes you look like a dick in a way, like it doesn't matter. It's just being yourself is important. We're all allowed to be that way. And that's what actually triggers other people to, to want to follow you, to want to be a part of what it is that you're doing and even be a part of the world in general. Like if everybody was just fitting into a mold, it really wouldn't be so fun. So, I mean, I think it's great what you're doing. I think it's so fun that you take the time to interview people and, and let them share their story and that you share all of the health knowledge and all of the emotional and spiritual growth knowledge and your journey. I think it's, I think it's really nice. And I think you're only going to keep growing. I think you're going to be so successful. I'm Thank super you. excited to have gotten this opportunity and we'll definitely chat again. Yay. Awesome. Thank you, Brittany. Wow. Really awesome. And uh, I'll post all the links in the information description. Montreal Healthy Girl, Brittany Auerbach. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, guys. Thanks so much.